Hey, what's up, guys? Benny here, and welcome to another episode of Benny's Bootcamp, which is my coaching series, which is designed to help make you better at Call of Duty Warzone. It's filled with tips and tricks to help improve your gameplay. This episode is focused around how to win more gunfights, so I hope you find it useful. And 89.3% of you watching this video are not subscribed to the channel, so subscribe, and I promise you'll get better at Warzone. So, without further ado, let's get into the gameplay. Okay, so to start off, we've landed in airport. I'm I'm not the best at kind of landing early, but I see my teammates are under fire. And this is a mistake. And I know it seems so early to start off with a mistake in my gameplay, but I can see my teammates just being knocked down. Um, and rather than me helping him and making sure that the person who's killed him is dead, I finish off a kill that's already done. So means that my teammate gets picked up and gets sent to the gulag. I really shouldn't have done that uh, and puts us in a bit of a tricky situation. Thankfully, my teammate manages to pick up the kill and put us in a good position, which was, which was lucky in the end. Uh, this bit, I've seen the enemy over there. I've seen my teammates have, uh, like, there's some gunfights going on on my minimap. So I'm going to push straight over. Now, this is the thing I want to just pick up on. So you'll notice I've seen them go in from the front of the building here on the right-hand side. I'm not going to go the exact same way as theirs. I, there could be potential and expectation if there's another team in the building for enemies to be there. So I managed to pull around, pull the flank, get a kill. And then my first thought is where can I hide to be able to plate up so I'm ready for another fight? So I've done that. And then I know the opponents are up there. My teammates taking gunfire, hearing your shots. And inside of buildings, you want to be hip firing with an SMG as much as you can because it's so powerful when you can strafe left to right really quickly. At this range especially, you're going to win gunfights. Very rarely ADS inside of buildings uh, while using a, a uh, SMG. I do hear... But the reason being is he was a little bit further back. If you watch this, right, I hit fire the person as he comes through the door, do that, but then aim down on sight to take the person who's a little bit further away where I could potentially miss some shots. Just guarantees that kill. P90 has got a quick uh, aim down sight time anyway. Then the next priority is to get a loadout drop. Now, once you've got the money as a team, you should always be trying to get a loadout drop. Myself and Mike, uh, have rotated around to the buy station and we, we we are having a random teammate in the game uh, who was called COVID, um, which is probably relevant to his name because uh, he was a right pain. But we see that he gets taken down and then we head over there to try and uh, kind of get his money so we can get a loadout drop, get the team back in um, as quickly as possible. Sadly, his money got picked up so we didn't have enough cash and he ends up losing the gulag. So See a team over here. Now, this is something that I really want everyone to start doing. Whenever you get in this situation, I've lost this gunfight. I've got no plates. I've got no situation where I can really come out on top. So if they've put shots down, I put some shots down. Don't have the weaponry for this. If I had our loadout, it could be a different story because you've got powerful weapons. But base floor loot's not going to work out. So it's like quick backup, get some plates for my teammate um, and try and see, try and get back to full strength if possible. Sadly, teammate loses the gulag. Uh, where we we know now we need to get we need to get our loadout drop so we can have a chance of winning this fight because we don't have the gear for it so we have to do that and we'll get money from there. Um, but this this is this is a decent start. We like if you have a look at the kills, we're on five kills already. Um, there's still 93 people alive. It's a pretty solid start. Sadly, we're a teammate down, but we've got loadouts and we can very quickly kind of get ourselves in a good position to come out on top and thankfully I get uh, another plate so I'm full health uh, and then we're kind of going to want to push straight over to do this. Now this is what not to do. So if you want to be revived by your team or, and help your team if you get taken out you do not want to spam ping which is what uh, our teammate sadly did and it, it makes you not want to revive them. So throughout the rest of the game he was just kind of spamming constantly which was quite irritating if I'm going to be honest because uh, it stops you being able to hear important gun sounds and stuff like that so be aware of that if you're if you're down everything that you're doing is affecting your team um, and how they can play the game it might stop them from being able to hear a sound here I get this is terrible terrible play for me so one thing you always want to be doing in in Call of Duty Warzone is always be on the move you never want to be a static target so I get focused and zone in on the player jumping off of uh, the police station. So I'm stared. I'm such an easy snipe. It's very hard to hit a moving target in the head. Luckily, I'm right by a bit of cover, can get behind the cover and get revived by my teammates so I get back into the fight. Then we get pushed by that squad. 
Getting shot from behind, so I've downed that player. So he might have a self revive. I don't know. I've not got a sight of him. So I'm just going to quickly rotate round so the other player doesn't have a clean line sight. This, this was a nice bit of play. So whatever you want to do when you're getting shot at is you want to create as much random movement as you can. So here, me throwing the slide in actually saved my life because I've got... Look at, look at my health. There is no health left. Um, so I pop around there. Get that kill, confirm, and luckily get some plates so I'm back up to full health and can get involved in the fight. My first priority in a situation like this is to get high ground. Uh, in Warzone, there aren't many counters to people on top of rooftops. You've either got to push them through the building or you've got to use a sniper to take them down or you've got to call in an airstrike. So there's, there's not much else that you can do. So this gives me a good opportunity to try and help counter this enemy team. Should have hit that headshot, really. I kind of rushed that shot. He didn't know where I was. Um, and this gets an interesting fight. This is what I like to call a no-win situation. Like, it's just going to be us sniping them, them sniping us. And really, all you're going to do is cost yourself plates. So it's best to kind of bail out and live to fight another day. So go to a buy station, get get plates, get your teammates back in, whatever you need to do. Um and then try and re-engage at a different time from another angle, which is what we do here. So we managed to get that first pick. Now, when you get the first pick in a team fight is when you want to push. So I know he's, someone's going to be around this area just because I'd use the heartbeat sensor. He's not got a ghost. Spot that guy in that garage, which is complete luck. I should have I should have really checked my corners when I went around this. So when, when I was here, if you have a look. Um, just before I killed this guy, I actually just, I just, I just blindly walk. I haven't checked my corners. Um, so I get lucky he's just looking the wrong way. Uh, but man, sometimes it just kind of goes your way, which is nice. Once game, I then check my heartbeat. No, nothing on the heartbeat. So I know he's not there. So I can then push and get that high ground. This is a great example of how to push a building with, with a teammate. So I know, uh, Mike's got the right hand side of the building. I'm then going to push to left and create a pinch. So there's not as many uh, places for the opponent to hide or counter, so we can kind of take them out together. So he sees Mike. I can then be really aggressive, make a mistake there with the uh, trying to throw a C4. Didn't have one. So uh, could have cost me in another situation, but overall, nice pickup. Once again, back to the buy station to restock and get stuff in. Uh, ideally, get UAVs, get a nice little snipe there. So I, I, I was quite proud of that. I'm getting better at sniping. It makes me, it makes me happy. Um, I go for the dream shot, you know, you, you got to try it once in a while. Um, this is an important part of the match. All right. So I thought there might be one team there uh, uh, in this area. So I've downed him. It wasn't a wipe. So I'm like, okay, there's two more players. He then gets get, he gets killed by an enemy team. So I'm then approaching this very, very cautiously because it could be a full team of three. I'm using the rock as cover and positioning myself just so I've got the least chance of getting shot. Being very cautious, being an overwatch of Mike as who's pushing in close. So you'll notice I go wide here to kind of get the high ground so I can then put shots down and also, more importantly, call out to my teammate where I'm seeing an opponent. So he's kind of dipping there, saw him dip back left, and now I can kind of go underneath to try and help. So the reason I actually went underneath here works. I remember my thought process for this part of the game is because I'd seen him go from right to left. I thought he might go inside. And not a lot of people realize you can come in from underneath the building. So they always pre-aim the, the front door, which is actually something you're going to see in a second. But I get so lucky there. That that was nearly the downside of having a 50-round uh, mag. Um, the, the panic, the panic here when I'm like, oh no, he's going to get the self-revive off. He's going to get the self-revive off. Just managed to get him off. I then hear the second self-revive go off. Don't he gets away? I'm just like, well, how how is this happening? But thankfully, managed to pick that up, and then I'm able to buy Mike back into the game um, because he wasn't he was being a good teammate and not ping spamming. So it always happens. Now this is what I was talking about. Where in this building, it's a it's quite a stressful thing. If you have a look at the map as well, we're in a good position because we kind of we, we were gatekeeping the ring circle, so we knew enemies were going to come at us. We've got I've got 11 kills so far, 43 players still left up. So this is could be a quite a high kill game. Uh, using that heartbeat sensor, being able to tell where the opponents are, cannot hear a thing because my teammate is ping spamming. But pick that kill up straight away. You run back and then start plating up. It's so key to get your plates off as quickly as you can, so you're ready for a for an engagement. So. Once again, I'm going to finish this kill off and then I will start plating straight away. So just, just check that I'm not getting pushed, but use the cover. Quickly check so I can cancel if, if needed. Check
checking the bottom as well and then using the heartbeat. So he, I knew he was on the heartbeat before. So I was using that. I was relying on that. And it's like, okay, I've got to move because the gas is now coming in. So I've got to make a play. So quickly check my area, get over the wall and stick near that. So I've got a bit of cover. I did hear some footsteps to the left there. So, and also then see him in the heartbeat. And I've got gas, gas on my side. So I know he's got to come at me so I can gatekeep. This is something you want to get yourself into as much as you can. You'll get so many kills like it. And this is something I'm proud of. All right, I was going originally. So if, if we go back a second, you can see, you might be able to see on the map, right? Just before I kill this guy here, there was the ATV. All right. And I was like, all right, cool. I need to get this ATV. And then I just see it getting stolen into the distance and manage to pull off this snipe. Always be weaving when you're in a vehicle. Do not let yourself be caught out in a situation like that. Um, and sadly, I just, I got tunnel vision and... I like this. It's it's so frustrating looking back because even though I'm in the gas, I'm I'm just running in the middle of the road. I've got no cover. I it put me it puts me in a blind situation. Like I should have changed that situation, but sadly got killed, got taken to the gulag, which I then lost, and we got wiped. So we're going into the second game, which I am very very proud of because I've started dropping a lot more at Superstore because there are some locations like Superstore and Airport where you're going to go if you want high kill games. Here, you just want to grab a weapon as quickly as you can and try and watch where else enemies could be coming from. So you want to stack up with your teammate as much as you can, get an automatic weapon because you're going to get a lot of close range combat in uh, Superstore. Like there's normally like six or seven squads here at the start of the game. It is chaotic, but you can get off to some incredible starts. And I just kind of want to pay attention for you to pay attention to how I'm looting. I'm very quickly just running to loot piles, but I'm staying, I'm keeping an eye on where enemies could be coming. So my eye line is like checking the corners. Here, we get caught out. Um, Mike goes up onto the top, gets taken out by a guy on the roof. And my, my first instinct is I want to get Mike back in, but there's that person on the roof is still going to be a problem. So I kind of move around, see that guy there. So I just want to break this down so you guys can see how I make my decisions to come out on top in this, in this gunfight. So see him running forward. So I know He's an easy kill. He doesn't know I'm coming. I'm, I've got going to get the first shot on him. So do that. I see the bullet traces from the right. So I know to jump straight in and to start firing that side. Take in. Hop here. Once again, see those bullet traces. I, I'm very cautious here because he's, he's not there. He's, he's clearly kind of backed up and moved, which is a very, very good play, by the way. When you take someone down from a certain position, you always want to be repositioning. You never want to stay static because if people know where you are, they're going to be able to counter you. And there, like brilliant movement by this guy. Absolute brilliant movement. So he dipped through there. He came past toilets, looped around Superstore, and then came at us from another angle. Takes me down. Luckily, I got the revive on Mike. So Mike was able to pick up that trade. Um, and we both live to fight another day, which is exactly what you want to do in that situation. Trade your kills with your teammates. Try and cover as many angles. And here, right, because I know I need to play up and Superstore is chaotic, I've gone straight into a corner where I've got as many lines of sight as possible. So if I see an enemy come, I can drop into cover and get my health up and be ready for the fight. I'm not just kind of doing it blindly. You want to minimize those angles. Um, and also, one of the best things with Superstore, you get so much money. UAV in, see this enemy coming, be able to pick this killer. He dies behind cover, but you can't stop a C4. Always, uh, when you go to throw C4s, one thing I'd recommend if it's not against a vehicle is make sure you've broken their armor first uh, before throwing it, unless there's like a group of them in a room and you're trying to weaken them with an SMG. Uh, this part of the game, um, we've seen someone on the UAV over in this location, which is why we've got a blue marker on the map. So one thing you want to be doing when you call in UAVs is mark each of your team, mark an individual spot on the map so you know where squads roughly are. Um, I popped my dead silence, got that kill. Mike then starts getting shot at from the two-story building. He calls that out to me because I've got dead silence. I know I can push into this building without them knowing. So it's a really important way to approach any gunfight or any situation within Warzone is try and get different angles and try and where in a if, if you can where they don't know where you are so i peek into that room because i know they've not seen me so i'm just going to go from this at just normal speed so we can see it all right so i've pushed up got the reload off hop the peak all right so i know they're focusing on mike so both in here i'm not sprinting so they don't hear me pull off the shots bit of messy shooting to be honest but managed to get the down and finish those off now i think that's a squad wipe because we killed someone in burger bar so i'm straight away check the heartbeat make sure there's no one else didn't see a squad wipe animation, but it worked out well. 
Here, so when I'm approaching a, I see Mike start shooting and uh, I'm, it's, it's kind of like a crest of a hill. So one thing I'm doing in this situation, just so I can try and get as much information as I can, I'm like bunny hopping. So I, I can't be shot easily, but I can kind of take in information. See, he finishes off the kill, but it's, it's not a squad wipe. So you know there's going to be one or two other players in the, in the vicinity. I spot those two players and push straight, straight into the building. I don't want to be in the open. I kind of want to get this fight to be as close as possible um, and then even playing ground. So using the heartbeat sensor, know exactly what one is. And the loot gods, the loot gods have blessed me. They've given me a dead silence. So I'm like straight away, pop that, knowing I can get, then get a flank on. Down him, his teammate's going to come out and help. No idea where I am because I've got a silencer and I've got dead silence. Um, there, I could have approached that a little bit better. So just for a future, just for like a future gunfight. I know he, I know he's around there. Um, really, I've kind of cancelled sprint. I've gone into sprint again, and it's it's a sm it's small, but it could be all the difference of coming out on top against a better player. So here you'll notice, right? I'm I, I've come out of, I've come out of a uh, sprint, so I'm ready for a gunfight. I then go into sprint again. And then I'm having to cancel to bring my gun back up again. I get I get those shots off and get him down because I'd already weakened him. But against a better player or someone that had full armor, they could have easily beat me and I would have lost that gunfight. So when you're going into a corner for a gunfight, try and always make sure that you're out of sprint. Confirm this kill. Now, I don't know if that's a squad wipe. So I'm like, likely place someone could be is up in the uh, the kind of the, the fire station tower. So see an RPG on the floor, fire it up. Just just on the off chance, no one there, but was a nice idea. And Mike just popped the last guy's head off with a sniper, which was, which was great. Here is a great example of why to ping opponents as much as you can, because all right, alone, I would not pick this kill up. So I managed to see him, I get the ping off. I use a paddle on the back of my controller, um, which is like there. So when I'm playing, I can always just ping. Ping it, I get the first shot off, Mike gets the second snipe off, and we get the kill. Then we start getting jumped. Okay, so I'm like, okay, I heard that guy, and I saw that guy there. So he stuns me, which is a very good play. Luckily, I have EOD on, which is why I survived the RPG. Mike did, Mike didn't, because he was, wasn't running EOD for some reason. But great idea as well, is he starts using his self-revive the second he goes down. And because I've wiped the squad, he doesn't need to use it. I can then finish it off. It's a quick revive, and I screw up massively here. All right. Instead of running straight away, all right, I'm, I I go, oh, I could buy a gas mask just because I, I need one because you don't get them out of scavengers anymore. So I'm just going to watch this. And so I'm like there, but I've done it too slowly. The gas is ahead of me. I'm not going to be able to outrun the gas. But because of the new feature where you can drop weapons, I drop my sniper rifle and then run with my fist so I get maximum movement speeds so I can then catch up back into the storm. It was the only way I could get out of that without dying. Otherwise, I'd have been toast. I would have got downed. Sadly, we get jumped by another team. We see this guy. Rest of his squad are coming in. And it, this, this is nearly the greatest play of all time. So Mike's just, Mike's got a great position. He's, he's killed one of them going for the loadout. He's got a vehicle next to him as well. I man, I've somehow managed to get into cover. Um, and Mike knows that he can't get across that distance. It's too open to get across there with two enemy players. So he gets in the vehicle, gets across to avoid the shots, uh, which was perfect. Gets the revive off, which I still don't know how he's managed to pull this off, honestly. And I'm just like, okay, right, I need to go do this. Sadly, they RPG the vehicle, and uh, which kills Mike in the explosion, but Mike's still got a self-revive, so he's still good. They just have an abundance of rocket launchers, which was sad. And ah, oh, I just, I want to go down this slow, slow speed. I down that first guy, and here, if I just waited a second, these guys got really aggressive. So, on, I want to I wanna do this frame by frame, because I want to see, right, so... I pop the shot, right, here, here, here. I miss those. If I if I landed those two shots there, I just I just overcompensated to the right and he he, he took me out. But luckily, uh Mike had a great gulag, managed to I, I lost my gulag. I had a I had a terrible day in the gulag. It happens to all of us. Um and Mike did a great job to get us all in. Um one thing I want to point out is when you're getting scavengers, if you're calling teammates back in. You'll notice here we've uh, got two out of three complete. You don't, if you can, always buy your teammates in before completing the scavenger because you'll get more tip money overall. So I'm able to do this and finish it, which means we get an extra 2,000 for completing it and we have enough to buy our loadout, which we wouldn't have if um, Mike had completed it and then bought me in. So always try and do that if you can. Get our loadouts and then we're ready for this next fight. 
Vehicles are a stressful thing, all right? When, like, this here. So I see on the mini-map, doing this, I'm like, oh, great, got the high ground. Managed to switch to the sniper, which you're able to do very quickly thanks to Amped, and finish the kill. Now, I, there's, there's so many situations within Warzone where I'm like, sometimes you want to thirst the kill, sometimes you don't. That's a situation when you've got a high ground and you can duck out of a fight where get the player out of the game. They might have a self-revive, they might not. Um, and it's just going to give you numbers against that squad for the for the long term. You're not having to worry about him. Uh, here, I'm proud of this sniping. See him get in the car, managed to take him down, and this just lined up perfectly. It's so unfortunate for the enemy team um, because his head was just, just over the crest of the hill, allowing me to card scope and get that double kill, uh, which I was very, very happy about. Now, it's, it's another example, right? I'm always kind of bunny hopping, trying to spot people over the crest of a hill. Um, and I do not know how that sniper bullet. Oh, no, I've got to see this. I've got to, I've got to see this. How did this sniper not hit me? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm like, okay, right, there we go. There, you see the glint of death? I've scoped in. I've not seen him. Oh, that duck, my head was just there. Um, survived that. But this is a great fight uh, to kind of break down how you can win two versus three scenarios. So I'm always going to be looking for the, the first pick. So getting the headshot, minimizing the amount I can be shot. I see this player flank to the left. So I'm like, Mike, I'll pick up flank because if he pushes to this side of this building, we're screwed. We're not going to have a leg to stand on. So I'm going to go straight there, pick up the side. So if he pushes us, I can pick that kill. We also know the gas is coming in. So they're going to be forced to come towards us within the, next, within the next minute. They've got to be where we are. So we've got the clock on our side. They've got to make a play. So here is... It's like I said earlier in the video, is always when you get a kill, reposition. Make it so the enemy team have no idea where you are because they knew I just killed that player there, communicated back, so we're able to pre-aim that and get some shots off of me. But thankfully, I've got enough plates and Mike was focusing on them. I've then got the high ground. Mike gets gunned down, but I can then take him up from the, the higher position. Reposition. Always be repositioning. Then I'm just going to make sure that they can't come from the sides, pick this side back up, and we know we've got a small part of the map they have to run through now they can't get on that left hand side and flank us so we're able just to gun these down in the open and we get two of the easiest kills you're going to get so always be thinking about positioning and where enemies can be coming from uh here mike spots a team uh only one of them was coming up on radar so two of them had ghosts and oh my god oh my god what was i doing what was I doing? <laughs> pay attention to the equipment that you have used I, I, I'm just I'm just trying to trigger a C4 that I don't have and I nearly get taken down there Which would have been uh, an embarrassing way to drop because at this stage of the game You know, he's gonna try and thirst you. You know, he is all right now the final circle um, Final circle gameplay is always the most stressful that you can have um, You always want to be having a high ground and you're always trying to get those picks um, Here we just see an opponent on the opposite side always ping the location so you both know where he is and uh, he's got great movement. He's really hard to hit, so it's why I'm just going for body shots because uh, you've got a higher probability of hitting those snipes. Uh, and Mike was doing the same, so we just both gunned him down. He got he went down straight away. Um, within these end games, you want to be looking for sniper glints. So here, that's how I figure out where this enemy is, and I'm I'm waiting for him to try and get his shots off. So I know I've got a half a second where I can pop around the corner and get a position on him. Um, and I'm trying to get him down so then I can then make a push across the open because you do not want to be blindly running across here when the enemy team have got full health and they've got uh, like full like armor. Uh, they're just going to focus you and beam you and you've got no cover and you, you're going you, you're gonna to get killed. So I've got across here. We know we're in the zone now. Uh, I've got a dead silence. Mike, you'll notice as well, both myself and Mike, we went separate ways. I went right and I went left. Now this is so that they kind of push their aim to both sides. You don't want them kind of focusing on you because it kind of creates a like a battle line. And then it's the easiest double kill to pick up that win, uh, which was very, very nice, if I, if I don't say so myself. Um, it was just a quick flank, pop the dead silence. Mike's come from the left-hand side. I've come from the right. You'll see them. They all turn to face Mike. And then I've got the shoot him in the side. But 
There we have it. Another episode of Benny's Boot Camp and how to get more kills. The first game, I got 15 kills super quickly. It was so unfortunate not to have a better game overall. That was on track for like a 30 or 25 kill game. And then we get a 32 kill game win uh, with 7,000 damage there. But that is another episode of Benny's Boot Camp. Please do let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe so you never miss out on another episode. I'm going to be doing loads more just like this as well as live comms in-game. And thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate all the support recently. And I will see you next time.